you have stumbled into a tech soup connect bc slash vancouver slash western canada event laura is going to be walking you through our topic today i am laura zubek i am a social impact manager at hootsuite i've been with the company about a year and a half our social impact team works on things like supporting our company esg goals uh, but we also get to drive our employee purpose programs and work with nonprofits there as well as work to uplift nonprofit organizations like yours through the power of social media to really further your impact in the world. Um, and we do that by providing product discounts and education through our Hoot Giving program, which we will touch more on at the end of this. But for now, I'll hand things over to my team member, Laura, who will be our expert for today to introduce herself. So much for having me today, you guys. Super excited to be chatting with you all about analytics. We've got lots that we're going to cover, but essentially I'm a social media strategist here at Hootsuite. So I work with lots of different Hootsuite customers, both nonprofit and for-profit businesses to help them think through their goals and ultimately different tactics that they can use to help reach those goals. So that is ultimately what we're going to be diving into today. Now, as Eli mentioned, we're going to start off by doing a bit of an introduction to analytics. So thinking about ultimately why it's important, what we need to keep in mind when it comes to analytics there as well, and how it can be valuable to us. We'll also talk about conducting a high-level audit, so reviewing what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and thinking about how we can take it to the next level and really get some good learnings from that audit that we might take into the future. We'll also talk about planning ahead, so really thinking about how we can really optimize what we're doing for the rest of the year. But I know some folks and some businesses are starting to get into that 2024 planning, which is crazy. That's coming up already. Um, so thinking about what you can do for the rest of the year, but also what you might want to consider when you're diving into that 2024 planning. All right. And then, of course, we'll leave plenty of room for any questions. We'll talk about who giving as well. As Laura mentioned there, lots of ground we're covering today. Now, before we dive into the introduction to analytics, I did want to just give a little bit of insight if you've never heard of Hootsuite before. So Hootsuite is essentially a social media management tool, so it can be helpful for scheduling out any content that you're producing. Take a look at those analytics like we're talking about today to see if there's any trends or anything that you're noticing about your content there. Of course, helps you grow your following by publishing content regularly, giving you some ideas and tactics you might want to try, and of course, help you drive some of those social media successful results. One really interesting stat that I wanted to share with you as well is we recently ran a survey of over 2,000 nonprofits and learned that Hootsuite helps them save an average of three hours per week when implementing their social strategies to, to generate awareness or build their community and raise money. So definitely always nice to save some time during the week. I know I would always love to get even just three hours back. That would be beautiful. So if you're looking to save some time and you want to learn more about Hootsuite, there is a link in the chat there from Eli. You can check that out and we'll talk about it a little later on today too. Okay. So with that, let's dive into analytics. So I think it's sometimes important to remember that social media teams sometimes operate in their own silo, right? So we work with a lot of extended teams, but sometimes they don't always have visibility into the impact that we're making as an organization or making on the organization as a whole, right? So Social media, you're doing a lot of really great things, showing them, creating a lot of great value. We want to showcase that to people. In terms of analytics, the benefits of it is that it can really help you ultimately see what's working well for you and then also help you see different areas that might be good to focus on in the future, right? So it can also show you what value you're providing to the organization as well, of course, and really know where you need to spend your time. So definitely something that we want to be looking at on a regular basis as we can, if we can, to get those insights in place. Now, I wanted to share as well a stat from a survey that we ran um, at Hootsuite here. 
And really, it said the number one challenge is that nonprofits have, they've mentioned to us, they need insights to know what's working so they can spend maybe their limited budget in the most effective way. And that's definitely something that we hear across the board from a lot of nonprofits there. But would love to know, even just from you guys in the chat today, feel free to comment a yes if you can really relate to really relying or needing those analytics to better understand where to spend or optimize your social budget. Is anyone sort of feeling like they can relate to that? Yeah, and seeing some yeses, amazing. It's definitely a common one, right? So we want to make sure we know how to spend our budget effectively. So those analytics will be able to tell us some really good insights into where that might actually be the most prevalent. Okay, now, as we know, there's also hundreds of metrics that we have the possibility to track when it comes to our social content. And sometimes these metrics also vary channel by channel as well or network by network. And so it can be sometimes a little bit overwhelming with knowing which metrics are really important for us to track success and which ones maybe don't matter as much in the grand scheme of things for us to really be focused in on. Let's dive into how to conduct a social audit because I would say that social audit is going to give us a little glimpse into where we want to focus and what social metrics are valuable for us to take a look at. Let's dive on in. Now, when conducting a social media audit, I always find it helpful to do this once a year. It's a good gut check, but just to also to make sure that you're on track with what you're hoping to achieve. Ultimately, a social media audit will help you determine what your most effective platforms are. It can also help you understand what your audience wants to see, taking a look at maybe what they typically engage with the most when it comes to your content. Maybe if there's any correlation between some of those top performing posts or even underperforming posts too, it's always good to take a look at that as well. It'll also help you better understand who your audience is. So we can make sure we're tailoring that content to the audience that's following us or our ideal audience that we want to reach. And then, of course, it can also help you understand how each platform really contributes to overall goals that you might have. Maybe it's growing fundraising efforts or building relationships within your community there. And of course, then finally, it can help you perhaps discover some new ideas to try, right? Maybe the remainder of the year, maybe the following year, and really where you want to focus your efforts. We do have, and I know Laura and Eli have both posted it in the chat there. It's a, essentially a free social media audit template. I find it super helpful, definitely. And as we're going through these steps in this section here about a social audit, it's all tied back to that template there. So feel free to use that resource as you're going through your social networks. And we'll be just covering what's in that today here. Okay. So what you'll need in order to conduct an audit, we'll go through each of these in a little more detail together, but essentially first you want to create a list of all of your social media accounts that you're running. We want to evaluate each profile, of course, identify that top performing content, evaluate each channel's performance. And then last but not least, we also want to take a look and understand our audience on each platform. So we'll go through each of these in a little more detail, which are also in that template there. But first, you'll want to go through and list all of the social media accounts that you have. So this will really, I find, help set the stage for you when it comes to kicking off that audit. And so what you'll want to do is essentially either use the template or create a separate Excel sheet with some of these headings here. And that can also do the trick but you'll want to go through and put the URL beside the different social networks that you have. If you happen to have more than one Facebook page, let's say, add another row in there and separate them out. You'll want to take a look at the follower count that you currently have on that page there, jot that down, and then the average number of posts that you're publishing per month. This can vary, right? So if you're publishing a ton of content, Maybe you look at it per week, right? You can always do that as well. Now, with a tool like Hootsuite, you can go through and pull that number quite easily in the analytics reports. If you're going in natively, you can also just do a rough estimate, right? So it doesn't have to be exact, but just taking a look at, on average, how much am I posting on this platform here? 
And then I find it helpful to pull the top three most engaging posts. So what has the highest number of likes and comments and shares or saves and put those in there as well. And you can always opt to hi uh, hyperlink them there so that they're really easy to click out and view. But always interesting, right? Just putting those right up front. And then as you're going through your other social networks as well that you have, you can see if there's any correlations between the networks themselves there too, right? So are your top three most engaging posts just on Facebook or are they across the board on all of the other platforms you're on too? So that can always be really interesting to take a look at there. All right. Next, we want to evaluate our profiles there. When it comes to evaluating our profiles, of course, this is just really thinking about consistency, right? Of course, there's a lot of best practices that we want to keep in mind for our profiles that we've got maybe the logo as our profile picture. We've got a cover photo that tells a little more information about our organization, a well thought out bio that goes into more detail so that when someone comes to our page for the first time, they get to know what we're all about a little easier. So ultimately, we want to keep those best practices in mind, but we also want to make sure that there's consistency. If someone is following you on your Facebook page, let's say, and they want to follow you on Instagram too, is it really easy for that person to find because you have the same profile photo? Maybe you have the same handle if you can or the same username. Make it really easy for someone to be able to find you on other networks if they want to follow you there too by having that consistency across the board. Now, another thing to evaluate when you're looking through your profiles during this audit is just making sure that any of the pinned posts or any of the highlights on Instagram, let's say, are still up to date, right? Even the cover photo aspect, if you're running a campaign, we want to make sure that we're switching out those cover photos or switching out those hyperlinks or pinned posts if they're linking to a campaign that's now over. So definitely, I know it's something that sometimes can be easily you slip your mind and you leave it for a little bit past the campaign. But we want to make sure we're going in there as often as we can and making sure that all of that is still up to date and we're linking where we want to be linking to. Okay, now the other thing you'll want to do as well is take a look through your posts for patterns. Thinking about maybe those top performing posts, but also the underperforming posts can be really helpful to check in on too and see what's getting the response you want. If you're hoping to get video views on some great content that you're producing, what's helping you get those video views, right? Is it a short video versus a long video? Is it a template versus something that is a little more quick that you're just fil filming on your phone and putting up on social? Thinking about what sort of templates or copy or whatever it may be for you is getting that response that you want to get from your audience. What has the highest engagement? This is definitely a very good one to look at. Engagement is a good one just because it helps tell you that your audience is interested in that content because they're saying, hey, yeah, I like this or I want to leave a valuable comment here. So seeing what has the highest engagement, but also what has the lowest engagement, as I was mentioning earlier, can be great to see what's working, what's not. How can we adjust that? Are people responding in the same way across all of your networks? So for this one, you're going to have different people following you on different networks, and they're typically going to go to those networks for different reasons. So if I'm on LinkedIn, I might be going there to learn more about my industry. I might be going there to connect with fellow colleagues. Maybe I'm going there to apply for an open role versus when I'm going to Instagram, I'm typically going there to connect with family and friends, maybe look at some creators that I follow as well. And so you really want to be thinking about why is someone going to that network in the first place? And are they responding to the comment or the content that I'm producing in a way that resonates with why they're going to that network in the first place? That can always be interesting to see if you need to tweak your tone of voice or what content you're publishing on that platform to get the response that you want, but also see if it differs or if it's fairly the same. And then last but not least, do people engage when you ask the question? This is a common one, right? I know I definitely struggle with this sometimes when it comes to social media and you sometimes worry too, right? If you're asking a question and you're like, oh my gosh, what if no one goes in and responds to it? 
So two tips, I would say, if you're in that boat or you're a little worried about asking your audience questions for that reason, one, just make sure that the question isn't too niche. Having it be maybe a little bit more open-ended, still tied to your industry, of course, but just keeping a little open-ended helps keep it accessible for anyone to answer and get some good conversations going within that comment section. And then the other one I would say too is sometimes people are just nervous to be the first one. To, and so I find it's the oldest trick in the book. We've all done it, including myself. You go in and you respond with your own personal profile or you tap some colleagues or friends or family on the shoulder and say, hey, can you go in and respond to this question? And that usually gets some good conversation going and maybe breaks the ice a little bit so that others can go in and respond to that too. Okay, so I've got a question and this can definitely be a great way to just share with some of the other folks that are on the call today too. Would love to know if there are any patterns that you're typically seeing with your social posts that are some interesting learnings that you've seen, right? So maybe behind the scenes images work really well for you. Maybe volunteer opportunities do really well as well. Maybe you've got a cool graphic or template that you're using. Let's get some insights going in the chat there. Feel free to comment there about what's working well for you because maybe someone else on today's call will get some ideas that they might want to try as well, right? A little bit of group sharing here. Amazing. So a good insight there from Eli. Videos always overperform. So that's definitely a really good one to see. I know video club typically does really well, right? Definitely a good way to get some engagement going. I find even for myself, photos that feature other people typically do really well as well, right? People like that human element, definitely a good one or good insight there too, just to make sure that we have a bit of a human element. Awesome. If anyone's got any other learnings, feel free to pop those in the chat and share them with others. It's definitely really interesting to think about there and see what's working for others or also what's not working for others, right? And then maybe we get some things that we want to test on our own as well there too. Awesome. There's a really good one here. Result-oriented posts. Awesome. I work for a construction company and it's impactful to show the before and after of the service we provide. Amazing. Yeah. So some before and after related content. I find that in itself is always so fun to see, right? Just seeing the big change that can happen there. So definitely a good insight. Maybe folks want to test out some before and afters. And then another good insight here, our posts that feature our partners, usually a blog on work that we do with them. When we tag them in particular, we get great engagement as they often share and comment themselves. Amazing. Yeah. So definitely making sure we're tagging individuals that might be relevant. They can go in and reshare it and help boost our reach there because it gets shown to their audience. So definitely a really good insight there as well. Amazing. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Okay. So next up in our audit, we want to make sure that we're listing out all of the goals that we have for our organization. So thinking about what it is that we're hoping to achieve ultimately. Um, and that might look different channel by channel, right? Um, and then once we have those goals in place, it'll be easier for us to make sure that we're tracking against them as well. I like to use the SMART framework. It's definitely very common. I'm sure plenty of you have heard of the SMART framework on the call, but if not, Essentially, with the SMART framework, it's trying to take our overall goal that we have and make it um, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Really thinking about trying to build out that goal a little bit more so that we can make sure that there is more aspects to it and it's a little more measurable. Definitely a great resource in there from Eli as well, talking about what SMART goals are if you want to learn a little bit more. If you have an overall goal, let's say, of building your overall follower growth, right, trying to get more followers on our page, maybe it's taking a look at that smart framework piece and saying, yeah, you know what, I want to grow my Twitter or now X following by 1,500 net new followers by the end of Q4 2023. So really making it very specific in terms of the number of followers that you want to grow, the channel in which you want to grow those on, and when you want to do that by, right? 
If you're wanting to drive virtual fundraising, maybe it's increasing virtual fundraising efforts on Facebook by 2%, right? So really making it very specific, very measurable. And then for the last goal there, overall brand awareness, trying to increase that brand awareness overall of the organization, the amazing work that you're doing. Maybe you want to improve your engagement rate on Facebook by 1% by the end of Q4 2023. So once you build out those SMART goals and they're very specific and measurable, timely, it'll be easier to think through some of those metrics that you want to track as well, right? So maybe for that first one, obviously, we're going to take a look at followers. Maybe I also want to take a look at my reach, right? See, am I reaching new audiences there? For uh, driving virtual fundraising, maybe I'm taking a look at those website clicks to see, you know, how many people are clicking out to my fundraising page. Um, if you're doing the fundraiser within the social network itself, maybe you're looking at fundraising efforts. So how much money was raised for that? Um, overall brand awareness, of course, engagement rate is always a good metric to take a look at there. Um, if Engagement rate is maybe more of a stretch goal, just looking at the engagements themselves, right? So looking at those likes, comments, shares, always good. I personally like engagement rate if you're able to do that, just because it um, puts it as a percentage. So it's easier to track month over month, because if you're posting more content one month than another, we want to be able to compare them in a similar way. So it helps having that percentage there, I will say. If you're posting video content, if you're looking at those video views, website clicks can also be another good one for brand awareness there too. Definitely some ideas to get you going, but would love to hear in the chat as we continue on through the audit slides here about what some of your social media goals are. Maybe it's some of these three here. Maybe you're hoping to grow your following brand awareness. So feel free to pop that in the chat. I want to see what some of those goals that you guys have are. Um, and then we'll go through and maybe I'll um, suggest some metrics or, or some uh, things that you might want to take a look at based on those goals that you're um, tracking, if they're different from these three here. Sweet. Okay. Now, next up in our audit, we want to understand our audience. So taking a look at those demographics, right? Who's following us on all of these pages? Maybe on LinkedIn, our audience is really those investors or employees. Maybe on Instagram or Facebook, it's more of those folks that maybe support the cause. On Twitter, maybe it's people that have attended a previous event or in-person volunteer opportunity. So the more we know about our audience, the better we can understand what content will really resonate with them and how we can really tailor that content to that audience there. Awesome. And I'm seeing some great goals in there so far. 50 registrations for the next webinar, increasing trust and building relationships. Amazing. That one especially, it's really thinking about maybe taking a look at sentiment, right? How many comments are we getting that are positive versus neutral versus negative? In terms of building relationships, maybe it's looking at the comments exclusively, right? Of course, we're taking a look at engagement rate, but maybe we also look at comments if we're wanting to get to know our audience a little bit more. Awesome. Some really good goals for sure. Okay. So let's dive into planning ahead then, really thinking about now that we've done our audit, we uh, know where we're at in terms of our social performance. Where do we go from here, right? How do we optimize what we're doing? So when you're putting together um, an optimization toolkit, the main things that you really want to be thinking about are UTM parameters, tags, and campaigns to really track what actions are being taken on your social content, and then maybe setting up some automated reports to stay on top of how your social content is performing on a regular basis. And then, of course, also setting up some benchmarks, which we'll chat through too to see how you stack up against your own performance there. We'll talk about each of these a little bit more. Now, if you're a Hootsuite customer, you may already be leveraging tags or have heard of them before, but tags can be a really good way to compartmentalize your content a little bit, make it super easy to filter through when you're pulling some of those reports. So inbound tags are essentially used more so for crisis management, maybe, or getting a good gut check on what sort of questions you typically get or comments you typically get. So I know sometimes folks will go in and label different incoming messages as positive, neutral, or negative to track that sentiment. 
maybe they'll go in and say and put tags for different common questions that they get so that they can see and track how many questions they're typically getting around a particular area of your organization, let's say. So inbound is usually just for tracking those inbound comments and DMs that you're getting. For outbound tags, those can be used to really track the success of social media posts that you're publishing. Maybe you've got campaign-specific tags. Maybe you've got tags set up for whether you're hosting, let's say, a fundraising live versus sharing a blog post. So uh, finding those different aspects that you really want to track that are important to you and what you might want to pull in terms of reports later. So those tags will be what you're using to filter through that content that you're publishing. Now, URLs, tiny URLs and UTM parameters can be definitely really helpful as well for tracking, tracking web traffic there. And so with URLs or UTM parameters, it can be quite interesting. Of course, we can take a look at our website clicks, and that's always a really good metric just to take a look at and see, okay, how many people are clicking from our social post into something a little more broad there on our page? Or if you're using UTM parameters today, which would essentially be like a Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, you can add a little piece of code to your link that you're sharing on social media. And that little piece of code will essentially give you some really good insight to see, okay, when someone is coming to our website, are they sticking around? What are they doing? Are they maybe filling in a fundraising form for us? Or you can see it just from a, a general perspective on Adobe or Google Analytics, what percentage of our web traffic is coming from social versus Google search. And so that can be really interesting too to prove that ROI, right? Being able to say, hey, did you know that 25% of our website traffic is coming from all of the great stuff that we're publishing on social? And be able to have that smart goal that maybe increase that quarter over quarter or year over year. And UTM parameters can be definitely a really fun way to showcase that, that value from a website perspective, but definitely website clicks are a really good starting point as well there. Now, in terms of building a post for optimal analysis, you might opt to use campaigns as well. So again, this is more so just for if you're on Hootsuite, but you can think of it almost like a preset where... Essentially, you'll set up a campaign if you've got something that you're running quite frequently. Maybe it's a volunteer opportunity that happens every year. And then when you select that campaign, it'll pre-populate all of those tags and UTM parameters or link settings that you have in place. So you don't have to go in and do that for each individual post, but rather you'll have that preset when you're putting together your content to, to post there. All right. Now, benchmarks, benchmarks are something that everybody can do. And benchmarks, I would say, are also a really good gut check to see what's working well for you on social helps you make sure that some of the goals that you're setting for yourself are also realistic. Um, a lot of people typically want to know how they're doing compared to their industry, which is always a good thing to take a look at. But these benchmarks, personal ones, I love especially just because you're tracking yourself against yourself. And that's always good to see that value and that increase that you're able to grow through your social efforts there. In order to create a benchmark, if you're a Hootsuite customer, you can set up a report in analytics. If you're not, then you can also set up an Excel spreadsheet and that will do the trick as well. And essentially what you're going to want to do is write down a metric that matters to you, right? Based on one of those goals that you have and write it down on a monthly basis, right? And then what you'll be able to do is average that out over time and that will create your personal benchmark. Now, I'm a more visual person. I like to see what that would look like. So essentially what you'll wanna do is create that Excel doc and put all of the months of the year in there. And then you'll go through, if I'm looking at engagement rate, I'm going to populate that there. Maybe I'm looking at follower growth. Maybe I'm looking at sentiment, whatever it may be for you. And I'm going to write down the overall engagement rate that I got that month on a particular social page that I run. And then I'll be able to take all of these engagement rates, add them all up and divide by the number of months that I have here. So in this case, it'll be five. As I add more months, I'll divide by six, seven, et cetera. And that's going to leave me with my overall personal benchmark here. 
So now when I look at, let's say my June performance here and it's sitting at about 3%, I know that I've done really well, right? It's above my benchmark, my personal benchmark there of 2.5% for the year so far. So it definitely gives some reason to celebrate. Amazing. Now, if you ever perform below your benchmark, so if this came in, let's say about 1.5, I find it's never a bad thing as long as you can sit back and analyze why. So maybe you posted less in June, Maybe you engaged with fewer accounts in June. Maybe somewhere in January to May, you had really strong campaigns happening that drove a ton of engagement and skewed it a little bit. So as long as you can sit back and analyze why, it's never a bad thing if you perform below your benchmark there. All right. Now, also taking a look at how you're doing in your industry can be really helpful too. So within Hootsuite, there are two reports that I love to take a look at regularly. And the first one is industry where you'll be able to see how you stamp up compared to other nonprofits in the that are using Hootsuite as a tool. So you'll get the how you compare against audience growth benchmarks, engagement rates, posting frequency. So there's a whole bunch of metrics in there and you can see how you compare it to other nonprofits that use Hootsuite. And then the competitive analysis is one of my personal faves. So you can put up to 20 different competitors into this report and you'll essentially be able to get a little competitive intel in there. You'll get to see whether their following is growing or stagnating or declining, how many posts they publish on a weekly basis, how many engagements they're typically getting on a weekly basis there, whether they're posting mostly video or photo content so you can see what types of content they're sharing their top performing posts are, what their underperforming posts are, trending hashtags that are being used that you can always take inspiration from and use as well. So competitive analysis is definitely a lot of fun to play around in. If you're not using Hootsuite, I would say just take the time to go in from time to time. Maybe it's once a quarter, maybe it's once a month if you have the time, but definitely once a quarter or once a year, go in and see what your competitors are posting about. Just scroll through their news feed, see if there's anything that stands out to you. And that can also be a really good way just to kind of do a bit of competitive analysis to see what they're posting about. And if there's any opportunity for you to either jump in on those conversations or lead the conversation in an area that they're not talking about as well. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground today. So I wanted to open it up for a final little bit of a few key takeaways here and resources. In terms of key takeaways, first, I would say just check in on your analytics on a regular basis. Maybe it's setting up a monthly cadence to go in, track your metrics, see how you're progressing towards those overall goals that you have, and it will help you make any changes to the social strategy that you have in place in real time, right? Viewing data holistically, social media metrics on their own might not always mean so much, but in addition to the organization's goals that you have, it can really paint a good picture into what's working well for you. It can help you showcase that ROI to your leadership, especially because you're not just saying, hey, we got X number of likes, but you're saying, hey, I know brand awareness is really critical to the organization. So we're able to increase our overall engagement rate by X percent. And that definitely helps drive our brand awareness goal. So trying to tell more of a story with our analytics, I would say. And then of course, using those metrics to make any changes to social media activities if needed to get them that real-time feedback on what's working well and what you might want to adapt to really drive success. I also have a couple of cheat sheets in here or just this cheat sheet here. And so this is diving into ultimately the different types of impact that your social content could have. So maybe it's you're looking at the content impact. Some of those metrics you might want to look at would be the number of posts that you're publishing, what your top content is, and then some of those more engagement related metrics. If you're wanting to take a look at your marketing or sales related impact, it's taking a look at those page views, some page reach, maybe looking at lead generation, or in this case, maybe some fundraising efforts and then website conversions. And then business impact is taking a look at that brand health, maybe taking a look at a little bit of sentiment there, revenue tied to social efforts, so those fundraising, and then crisis management as well. 
Okay. Now I believe I'm handing it over to Laura to talk a little bit about hoop giving, and then we'll open it up for any questions that anybody has. Yeah. Thank you so much, Laura. It's so much good information. I hope you're all taking a moment to digest, brainstorm your questions while you have Laura's ear for the Q&A period. But just on this next slide, we want to share with attendees today a couple of things to take advantage of that are some of our special perks for nonprofits. So first, we have created a social media strategy template that's specifically for nonprofits that uh, Eli has actually shared with you now in the chat. Thank you, Eli. It's a really great tool to comprehensively apply all the learnings from today's session in a way that you can walk through um, on your own time and plug and play. The second thing we want to share with you is that Hootsuite does offer up to 75% off of our Teams and Pro plans for eligible nonprofits uh, with our Hoot Giving nonprofit discount program. We know that social media is just a really crucial tool to help nonprofits spread awareness, connect with your communities, get supporters to take action, whether that's making a donation, maybe signing up for a volunteer opportunity. And like Laura mentioned, we did run that survey. We learned that using Hootsuite is helping nonprofits save a lot of time in their week, which this audience knows better than anyone is time you need to be furthering your mission in other ways. If you are curious about who giving beyond the information we've shared with you today, Eli's dropped a link in the chat where you can find more information about who's eligible for that discount and how to apply. Awesome. All right. We will open it up for Q&A now. Uh, who has got some questions for us? Friends, keep on throwing your questions into uh, Hoots into the chat here, and uh, we'll make sure we ad address those. Here's a great question coming from a DSC conference saying, what about this discount program, does it come through TechSoup and then Hootsuite? And if that's a stumper for you, I can probably tackle this. Yeah, so I can add from my perspective, and then Eli's obviously got the TechSoup perspective as well. But we do partner with TechSoup to scale how we get our tool into the hands of as many nonprofits as possible, just to really make sure that everyone can get that affordable access to social media management, that we're able to really scale our program in incredible ways globally with the expertise they have for nonprofit validation. So how it works is you will go to TechSoup and you'll get a validation token. If you already have that, you can just plug it right into the application form. If you don't, you, it's a really simple process with TechSoup. Once you have that token approved, you'll plug that into the form and it will let you know if you're eligible for the Hoot Giving discount. And then you can get started with, you actually get a 30-day free trial before you would start paying the discounted rate. Totally. So that's, thank you. So basically it's going to be a two-step tango. So you are going to go and create a TechSoup account if you don't already have one. If you do, then the next thing takes you five seconds. So then you would do exactly what Laura says. You log into your TechSoup account. And from there, you're going to get this unique token, um, this big, long, random character thing. And you're going to use that to basically prove to Hootsuite that you are a valid, eligible nonprofit. If you get stuck along the way, send an email to your friends at TechSoup support, and they'll be happy to take you the rest of the way. I've got another question here coming in from Hank, who's saying, hey, Hootsuite friends, are you going to be adding support for Threads or Blue Sky, all the hot new flavors out there? A good question. I believe definitely would love to at some point. We are at a little bit of the hands of the social networks themselves when it comes to them opening up these APIs. So I haven't heard anything myself, but I know it's definitely top of mind, especially threads. So we'll see, but fingers crossed those APIs get open so that it's something that we could offer down the line. Awesome. Yes. I don't need to make you like spill the beans on future product announcements, but there is a sort of a related question that came up here, which is there's been a lot of fast evolution in the social media space of late. How do you keep on top of the hot gossip, the emerging trends in the social world? Yeah, it's such a good question. I find when staying on top of social trends, the first line of action that you have is curating your newsfeed, right? So follow different blogs or news sources to see what's uh, what's happening in real time. 
I find the Hootsuite blog also has a lot of really good info. So definitely check out the the blog there. Our team is pretty good at jumping on those trends quite quickly and giving you the info that you need to know. And then also usually the social networks themselves will have either a blog or help center as well that will dive into some of those changes too. So I would say try the Hootsuite blog, try those social networks themselves, their help centers. And besides that, just curate that news feed and that will always help help you stay on top of different trends that are happening. Awesome. Yeah, social media today too is another really good one. So here's a question from one of the consultants in the space who actually wants to talk to the two of you because you talk to a lot of nonprofits as well. And the question is, obviously as a consultant, you really want to speak to the metrics that are the ones that really resonate and, and, and capture the attention of the client. And when you talk to other nonprofits right now, what is, what is top of mind for them when they talk metrics? Yeah, it's a really good question. I would say in terms of metrics, I find really trying to pick some of those ones that are aligned with the organization's goals itself is really the most critical piece, right? Anyone can look at engagement rate or video views, but why is it important to look at those? And I feel every organization is going to have different missions and different things they're hoping to do. And so it's really important to make sure that the ROI that you're demonstrating really ties back to that mission and what you're hoping to achieve. So it will look different for everybody, but I would say really trying to work through those smart goals and then figure out those metrics from there and what you're hoping to achieve can be a helpful starting point. I don't know, Laura, if you have any other advice too for some of the nonprofits that you chat with. Yeah, I think that's the most fundamental advice for sure. The only thing I might add is like we know that the top three things that nonprofits self-report using social for are generating awareness. So really when they have a program or an event or a campaign, pushing that out, connecting with clients who really growing reach and fundraising. And of course, those are going to have their own metrics in and of themselves. But what we really try to advise to nonprofits is to make sure that they're starting with those fundamental relationship building pieces on social, because if you go to your audience with a fundraising ask, but you haven't put in the time for that engagement and making sure that sentiment is really positive with your audience, that fundraising ask will fall flat. So looking at some of those baseline metrics that are really just about, are we growing our audience? Or do we have a really strong relationship with them on social? Those are going to be really important ones for your clients as well. Cool. Really helpful. Some of the nonprofits here, and I'm sure it's not the ones in this group here with us today, are small and don't have very large budgets. So how do you recommend that people prioritize the right types of posts? Like how do we figure out like how we should be best engaging with our social community? Yeah, so I would say your organic social content is the best testing ground for if you have budget to run paid ads, fantastic. Use your organic to see what works well because that will likely be what works well for you in terms of paid ads. And then another tip. Oh, and quick side note here. Can you just yeah. remind us what it means when you say organic? Yeah. So organic content is typically anything that you just publish right on the social network itself with no paid behind it. So there's no ad or anything. It's just the regular pulse that you put up on, on your social networks there. Yeah. So test out what works well for you from an organic content perspective. Maybe there's a certain topic that you're chatting about. Maybe there is one post that gets a lot of really good interaction. Think about why, right? What drove all of that great engagement for you? And then if you're opting to use some of your budget towards paid ads, I would say the best thing that you can do is maybe not boost your posts. If you choose to boost your post, boost one that is already doing really well and has a lot of high engagement because it helps extend that reach. But my recommendation would be to set up a separate ad campaign and what you can do is test it out, right? It's also another great spot to A-B test. 
create three different ads, whether it's, and you want to change just one thing only. So whether it's a different image, but three, the post copy is the same across the board or the other way around where you have three different images and the same post copy or vice versa, leave it for 24 hours or until you get a, a thousand impressions. And then you'll be able to see, okay, which ad is doing really well. There's usually going to be one that outperforms the others. Then you get to turn the other ones off, leave the rest of that paid budget towards the one that's doing well. And that's a really good way to make sure that you're spending the budget that you have on an ad that's performing for you. And you don't have to test and lose money on ads that maybe aren't getting the great uh, results that you want to have. So I would say if you're going to boost a post, do it for just the top performing ones that you have there that are doing well organically or set up a little A-B test in paid ads there as well. Awesome. That is some great useful tips on like how to come and tackle some of these like initial tests when we're going to be social media scientists. Exactly. Got to do the A-B tests. <laughs> Yeah, especially if we're going to spend money on it. Like, why not? So that's amazing. I think we've run through most of our questions so far. To all the attendees, know that we're not done yet. We are going to have all the video, the slides, plus several of these key links. And we'll send all of those to you probably later today, this afternoon. So you don't even have to go to sleep and forget anything. It's going to work out great for you. I'm super duper grateful to our friends at Hootsuite for coming in and giving our time. And as you can see, I'm seeing here from Jacqueline in the comments, great webinars and people are jumping in, throwing in the applause and the emojis. Laura, thank you so much to both Laura Zubik and to robot Laura Ricklick. I'm really grateful for your time and engaging with the nonprofit community. And if we wanted to get a little bit more of this awesome learning, are there any other events and upcoming things happening dedicated to the social good nonprofit Hootsuite community? Good question. We do we do run regular webinars with Hootsuite, some of which are targeted specifically for nonprofits. We don't have the exact landing page up yet for registration, but we can give you a teaser that early December we'll actually be doing a social trends that you need to be paying attention for specifically for nonprofits. So Hootsuite runs a huge research and survey report every year about the top trends to watch. And this year we're really exciting, excited that we're partnering actually with Giving Tuesday and we're breaking that down for what nonprofits should pay attention to. So keep your eye out for that and just head to the Hootsuite blog page, which we can drop a link for to look for our regular webinar series.